Hi, I'm Kirk George and I'm in 8th grade. So has anybody ever told you that you had to do something because you'd be the best at it? Or has anybody ever told you that you need to do something and you need to do it according, according to their standards? That's called an expectation. And we've all been there, including me. I've currently been attending St. Christopher's for nine years, and if there's anything that I've learned is that you control your own actions, and you control what you are and how people see you. In third grade, I racked up 246 reminders, and this is a fact because I, I counted them with myself or, and my teacher, going through them every day. Uh, if you don't know what those are, it's like you get in trouble when you circle them, so like, you know, they're like, yeah. And it's roughly 1.5 reminders a day, and you had three to burn, so I was fine. So, yeah. Simply put, I was poorly behaved, extremely poorly behaved. Every day I would try to make jokes. Some of them would get a laugh, but all of them would get me in trouble. Okay. So this is just an uh, example. This is me in fifth grade, and we had to learn how to use a online video making software, and this is how I decided to spend, wait, that's <laughs> How do you get it to like, well, just hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And if you can see by her face, she was clearly not too happy, and I was, you know, I was loving it, but, you know, <laughs> that's, you know, I got in trouble for that one, so, that's just, that's video evidence of me being poorly behaved. So, some people started to label me. I was supposed to be the funny guy who made fart jokes and got the rest of us eight-year-olds laughing. But as I grew older, the more annoying and unfunny I became. Up until about fifth grade, I hadn't realized that everything I had done for all my life had been to be in had been to be the funny guy. Since I was no longer the class clown slash comedian, I was essentially an outcast. In fifth grade, I was weird. I had a, I had a Canadian girlfriend who I met on Roblox. <laughs> uh, I wasn't good at any sports, I did nothing, and all of this as a fifth grader. This is when I decided to pick up sports. I, uh, I started playing basketball and football, and um, uh, I would throw the football with my dad and shoot on a hoop that was in terrible condition terrible condition when I got bored. It wasn't until I started watching basketball that I really got into it. Uh, I had always watched football, but I never really had a football to throw. As you may know, basketball and football are for winter and fall sports, and I never had a spring sport. I tried lacrosse and I hated it. I tried to play tennis, but I was too bad to get on the level of anybody else. And I, never been, I have never been golfing, and I hope to try one day, but it's currently out of my power to go golfing, and I assume I'll be bad at that because golf is a sport. So I resorted to track, due to everybody telling me that I would be good at it. I reasoned that track required absolutely no skill, and to some extent, I was correct. Not to offend anybody who's currently in track, but most of you know how to run in a line when you were three years old. So, I was a pretty good track runner. I got my name on a leaderboard a couple times, and I could jump pretty far. There was one problem. I hated running. I despised it. I still despise it. And most likely for the rest of my life, I'll never do a ton of cardio work unless I end up being a professional athlete. So therefore, I won't be doing any cardio work. Uh, you would think that being good at something would mean that you would like it, but I don't. Some people do like you know stuff that they're good at, and some people love it, and that's their thing, and good for them. But you should only ever pursue something unless it makes you happy. If you don't necessarily like your job, but you make a lot of money and spend your money in ways that make you happy, then that's good too. So continuing with the story, the year after track, I played football. Throughout the football season, I scored a fair amount of touchdowns, and I also achieved a decent amount of tackles during the course of the season. We won a good amount of games, and the whole team had fun during it. And the overall status of the football season was a success. Then came basketball season. During basketball season, I made three to four shots a game, rarely outside 10 feet away from the hoop. I made and missed a fair amount of layups. Breakaway layups, driving layups. I still gathered the majority of my points from those opportunities. After basketball season, I made a big decision. I decided to join the baseball team. I heard more than enough times that my speed was being wasted and that I should be in track because I'm fast. Being good at something, or at least being known for something will always go on our reputation or expectation that other people will use to label you without your knowing opinions, without knowing your opinions on that label. And this label would stick, and during the course of the baseball season, I got base, I got on base eight or nine times only from singles and hitting the ball no more than 30 feet at most. Yeah. Many, of the t many of those plays that I made could have been made against me, but I got to the base quicker than the opponent could make the play. From the outside looking in, it may appear that I'm not very good at baseball, and that would be a pretty fair assumption. However, hitting the way I hit, I got on base pretty often. During the football season, I scored a lot of touchdowns because I was fast. During the basketball season, I made breakaway layups because I was fast. And during the baseball season, I got on base after a crappy hit because I was fast. I was able to use my talent to do something else, something that I actually wanted to do and something that I actually enjoyed. 
In my opinion, that's what life is all about. Being able to enjoy doing what you do by using your gift to explore your own potential and talent, rather than succumbing to the fact that whatever you're good at is what you have to be and stick with it. Never do what you're good at to do it. Use what you're good at to love what you do. And that's my tip.